Hey everybody, welcome back to another Motivation Monday podcast for Monday, April 16th, 2018. Hope you had a great weekend. Hope you got a lot of time in on the horn last week. It's time to begin a new week and time to get inspired. So today what we're going to talk about is an email I got from one of our listeners, Larry. Shout out to Larry for writing into the podcast and thank you so much for uh, starting a discussion that I think is actually going to be of benefit to a lot of the folks out there. So Larry wrote in and uh, he said he was catching up on some of the podcasts and he said the the Motivation Monday podcast about going to New York particularly hit home for him because he actually lives right outside of New York City and actually works in the city a couple of days a week. So this particular paragraph that he wrote in his email caught me. He said, Cer- certainly New York is an amazing place for jazz. There's more going on than anyone could ever see, do, or afford. It generally is, no doubt, very inspiring. But the one thing that you didn't mention is that the other end of the spectrum can also be true. There are so many great players and so much competition that it can get a bit overwhelming. It's very easy to let all of that become a negative rather than a positive and to get down on one's own progress and playing if you're not careful. And while many, hopefully most, of the other musicians tend to be helpful and encouraging, there are always some who are more interested in vibing. And I think that that is so true. I think that everything that Larry said in that particular paragraph of his email really hits home for me. So let's unpack that email a little bit at a time here. The first thing I want to mention is that, yes, You know, the opposite of being inspired can definitely be true when you're in New York City. You can go home and you can feel like crap about your own playing and think, oh my gosh, I heard so many musicians that sound so amazing. How am I ever going to make my mark on this music when I can't even keep up with the 30 different musicians that I saw this weekend or this week in New York City? Yeah, that's true. But I think what you have to make a conscious decision on before you enter that situation is that there's always going to be somebody better than you out there, right? And there's always going to be a lot of people that are better than you out there. But if you make a conscious decision to let that inspire you rather than let it defeat you, you're going to be in much better mental shape when you hear those players And it really is as simple as that. I almost think about it like flipping a switch in your brain where you can either get dark or you can really let it inspire you to say, okay, if I just keep working at some point in my musical career, I'm going to be at the level of those people. Maybe they just got a head start on you. You know, maybe they had a lot of advantages that you didn't have or maybe they just plain worked harder than you. So you have to kind of be honest with yourself as well, is that nobody got to the level where they're really making you think about how good they are. And man, if I could sound like that, I would be so excited. Um, Nobody got to that level without a lot of hard work, a lot of dedication, and a lot of sacrifice, right? So if you make the mental decision to let it inspire you instead of defeat you, I think that kind of prepares you to go in those situations and hear a lot of really great musicians. And certainly when you're in New York or a major, major jazz city like Boston or Chicago or Los Angeles or any of those kind of meccas for musicians, you got to really make that decision before you before you step into a club to check somebody out. Um, it's so much more healthy and so much more beneficial to you to let it inspire you rather than defeat you. Just make that decision before you go into the situation. All right, I just repeated myself like 10 times, but that's that's really what it is. I think that's gonna help you in that situation. All right, let's move on to the next point. Let's talk about musicians that are kind of jerks and wanna vibe you. And that is really a thing that happens a lot. So many times in my life have I stepped into a situation and met a musician for the first time and they've just been really standoffish or they won't even look at you until they know you can play. And I got to tell you that this is really few and far in between. 
And to be honest, most of the musicians that are going to vibe you and make you feel uncomfortable aren't even really the best musicians. And I mean, obviously, they definitely aren't the best people in the world. And you got to just, it's like the same thing. You have no idea what happened to that person that day. Uh, you have no idea how they are off the bandstand if you're just meeting them for the first time. Just take it at face value. Just continue to be a really, really nice person. And the meaner they are to you, the nicer you are to them. That's usually the way that I handle those situations. And then there's nothing bad that they can say about you. There's nothing that anybody can say about you if you're just a nice person to be around. And I got to tell you, in my life, after meeting so many of my musical heroes after gigs or happening to run into them or something like that, usually the bigger the artist is, the nicer a person they are. So just, just, I don't know, you can, you can let it get to you or you can make, again, that conscious decision to just say, you know what, if somebody's going to be a jerk to me and vibe me, then I'm just going to be extra super nice to them. And then it kind of throws them off their game a little bit. But yeah, there are jerks out there. There are bad people that play music, just like there's bad people that you find in every career field, in every situation that you find yourself in. It's just people that aren't pleasant to be around, and music is no exception. Now, you also have to kind of think about it from this angle. If you are polite, and you know your place at a jam session or something like that, and you don't storm into the room, try to take over the whole situation, then nobody has any grounds to vibe you. Now, you also have to think to yourself, if you are getting vibed at a jam session or a hang or whatever, is it your fault? Are you trying to kind of make it your situation? Are you trying to take over the conversation? Are you trying to take over the situation musically and being kind of out of place? Well, then I would say, you know, it's, it's actually kind of your fault if you're getting vibed. And think about this for a second. If you're getting vibed by everybody in the room and not just one person that might have had a bad day or is a jerk like we were talking about, you might want to take a look at yourself, right? So you got to think about it from two different angles. You've got to be a really good person if you expect these other people to accept you musically and socially and all those kind of things that go into those interactions. So check yourself first. And then if you're pretty sure that you haven't done anything that's out of line and somebody's being a jerk to you, whatever. There's nothing you can do to change that other person. And if the whole jam session is like that and you've checked yourself and, and it's not you, go find another place to hang out because really there's no room for that negative energy in any of our lives, let alone when we're trying to make music with other people and maybe develop a new circle of friends or acquaintances. So these are things that you're going to run into. And you know, New York City being the biggest of everything, the biggest city in the country, the biggest music scene in the country, you're going to run into it more there than almost anywhere else, right? Just because of the sheer volume of people and the sheer volume of musical situations that are out there that you can put yourself into, you're going to run into it there more than anywhere else. So I hope that clears up a couple of things. If you have uh, run into some of those same things that Larry has over the years in New York City or any other city, um, maybe some things to think about. But again, thanks to Larry for bringing up those points. I love it when people write in and uh, give me their reactions or their thoughts to what I'm talking about on these podcasts. And I would love to give anybody out there a shout out uh, for writing in and maybe starting a topic of conversation. All right, we will see you on Friday with a brand new regular episode. And I hope everybody has a great week. So start your journey to becoming one of those musicians that uh, is going to inspire people and maybe make people think, oh, geez, I got a lot of work to do on my instrument. Um, we want to really strive to be one of those people. All right, I'll talk to you soon. Have a good week, everybody. Bye.